This is the Ender 3 and the Ender 3 Pro's motherboard. Now, the, the great thing about the Ender 3 is that it is an inexpensive printer. So quite a few people have gotten it. Now, a lot of those people also have a budget. And so I was able to splurge and get the printer, but then that's about it. I got some filament and I, my budget for 3D printing stuff is maybe 10 to $20 a month. And the way that I get around that low uh, budget limitation is by getting things as cheaply as I can and doing a lot of the manual stuff myself. So one way to save money with this, with installing a BL Touch, one, get the clone, clone BL Touch. And I know there are going to be a lot of people who aren't happy about that. But with the, with the cloned BL Touch, you're able to do the same thing as the BL Touch and save some money. I would like to support the creators of it, but I just don't have the funding to do that. And I'm, I'm really sorry about that, but, um, but that's just the way it is. And I know that there are a lot of people out there. And what I want to do is I want to get to the point where I can buy those official things for $50, $100, or whatever it happens to be. But there are quite a few people who are out there who they are not at that point. And so this is a way to do the BL Touch and you can, you can learn how to solder doing this and doing a lot of the stuff yourself and that will save you some money. Now the other thing that we'll be doing is we'll be salvaging from, we'll be salvaging maybe USB wires or other things along those lines to get the, to get the, uh, the wires for this. Now one thing that we're also going to do is we're going to flash the board using a different method. So this is the Arduino Nano that we're going to be using to flash this board. And I have a capacitor. This capacitor is in between the reset line and the ground line. It is a 35 volt. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description of the capacitor. Now, a lot of people haven't, a lot of people don't use this and most likely it'll work out for you. I believe I added this whenever I was having trouble and then I found this method and using this method you probably don't need it. So let's see, uh, this is the ground line and the ground on here matches up with the upper right hand corner. So you want to make sure that the ground is plugged in upper right hand corner and then that will set everything else correctly. Um, now on the the nano itself the ground is the bottom left hand corner and so you'd flip that around. Now all of these wires uh, I cut them from these uh, male to female connectors. For some reason the set that I ordered didn't have any female to female connectors so I needed to make some. Now, you could probably order a set of these for a couple bucks, and I'll see if I can find a female-to-female -female set or some kind of uh, pin header adapter. I'd be curious if you could repurpose, now that I think about it, I'd be curious if you could repurpose the LCD connector. That would be ironic. Um, but you would still need to get the uh, the pin to pin 10 uh, to, to work this all out. We're going to navigate over to this Instructables article, and this... Um, now, we don't have a CR10. Uh, if you're doing this, it's probably following along for the Ender 3 or the Ender 3 Pro. What's great is that for flashing the bootloader, it has some really good information. Now, I have had trouble... What I've had trouble with is flashing the bootloader using the way that you're supposed to. And so there is this, if everything does not work correctly, uh, process that is great. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, download his sketches. So thank you, Nick. Again, I've made a video on this before, but this time we're actually going to do it. So we're going to take his sketches and I'll throw it into this Ender 3 folder. We'll be using this later on. So then we're going to, what folder did they want us to go to? 
Yeah, Mega Board Programmer, and then downloading that. Rather, opening it with the Arduino software. Now, one thing that I am skipping, uh, you need to install the, you still need to do this for, uh, for this uh, board, but you need to download the Sanguino uh, software, and you're going to need that so that whenever we go to flash it, Sanguino is an option. And uh, those directions are right there. I'm not going to go over that, though, because this is the important part. This is the part that, honestly, that, that will get people through this. So, okay, so we've got this, and we are going to plug in going to plug in the nano or whatever uh, now of course the pinouts will be a little bit different as in which pin the data is the data reset line um, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and load the software onto this so we'll oh yes the other thing is is you want to make sure that it's correct so I had it set up I was doing a test earlier and Arduino nano nano where is it Nano. Now mine is a knockoff, and so it is the old bootloader, and the port, I believe it's port 6, but what you do is you right-click on the Windows uh, icon and go to Device Manager, or you'd search and find Device Manager, get to Device Manager, um, and we look at ports. So this USB serial, if I unplug this guy, Everything reloads and it is gone. Now I plug it back in and it's back. So we're on port six, which is important to know. So I had it already set for port six and yeah, so we will upload. And this always takes a couple seconds and done. So now, we're going to plug this in and making sure that I have the correct ground, which is this one, upper right to upper right. Plug that in. It is now attached. We will go to the serial monitor. So this is good. We wanted this stuff to show up because this is showing that we are attached to the uh, to the Arduino Nano or whatever Arduino you happen to be using. So then we will go to, I believe it is G, press G. Now you wanna make sure it is the NR and CR and that baud rate as it says in the tutorial and press send. It is, it has written the, uh, the bootloader to the board. So that's great. It, that board is now ready for us to hook it up to to the computer directly. So remove that. The other thing that I did to make this a little bit easier on myself, I I shrunk wrap, used a heat shrink on here, and then I also did a little bit of super glue on the bottom and the top. I kept on having the pins coming out. I might end up doing it to this side. But there we go. We're done with that guy. Okay, so time to go ahead and open up Marlin. I'll close that so I can show it to you from the beginning. So apparently the Marlin.no needs to be in a folder called Marlin. Otherwise it doesn't like you. But we'll open up this again, wait for it to load. In the meantime, go ahead and check our comms port. And it is on port eight. So we'll make sure that this is on port eight and it is not the nano. Go all the way down here, Sanguino, or however you say it. And then it is the 16 megahertz and that memory size. Okay, uh, so this has already had all the changes needed for, uh, for the BL Touch. If you want to set it up yourself, you can go through in there and change things. I've also disabled things like the boot screen and names of P 
people on there who edited the file and all that kind of stuff. If you wanted to add them, you could. Um, but this is for your own personal use. So uh, we'll go ahead and upload. And it is compiling again. Something that annoys me is that you can compile and upload and the, the compiling will work. And then say if you just compiled it and the compiling worked and then you go to upload it because you wanted to see if what you compiled worked. Instead of uploading what just previously works, it compiles it all again, even though it knows that there are no changes in the files. That's something that I've never really understood about the software. Actually, 3D printing in general will be in a better state when the installing of Marlin doesn't involve the Arduino software. It might not be very nice for me to say. Okay, almost done uploading. Done. Okay, great. 